One of the GPIC objectives is to develop new system design tools and integrated interactive visualization-based team design processes, which are applicable to both retrofit and new construction. Computational fluid dynamics has been proved effective in studying the detailed thermal and fluid dynamic conditions in the building, which are important for energy-efficient heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system design, as well as maintaining human comfort and enhancing productivity. Building 661 on the Navy Yard has been chosen as a test bed for research on deep retrofitting. We started the CFD study on natural ventilation potential for building CSIS-1, which will serve as important information for architects to design better naturally ventilated buildings, which is an important feature to save energy for buildings. There are four simulation tools used in this study. Google Earth and Google SketchUp are used to model the geometry of the building. OT machine tool developed by the author at Carnegie Mellon University was used to generate meshes, and ANSYS Fluent was used to conduct the simulation and visualizing the results. What is being shown here is a navy yard in Google Earth. The lower building with skylights on top is the building 661, and there are three immediate buildings adjacent to building 661. 3D surface models of the building on the navy yard are available in Google SketchUp format, including the building 661 and its neighboring buildings, which will be important reference models for conducting CFD simulations. The models in Google Earth were downloaded and used as reference to construct the watertight geometry models for conducting the CFD simulation. Simple windows were added, and the internal of the space is partitioned into five large zones connected with doors. After the geometry of the building is correctly modeled, the CFD simulation domain has to be discretized into smaller elements, which are referred to as mesh. The mesh generation algorithm used in this study is derived from algorithms used to generate mesh for complicated geometries, such as heart and head of a human body. For example, with the capability of the mesh generation algorithm, CFD can be used to study the natural buoyancy flow near a human body. Several steps were carried out to generate the mesh as shown in the figure below. In order to correctly model the boundary layer flow, a very thin layer of mesh is generated, referred to as boundary layer mesh. The boundary layer mesh has to be thin enough so that the Y plus value is less than 5. 
The y plus value is the dimensionless wall distance and is defined as friction velocity times the distance to the wall divided by the kinetic viscosity. As shown, the y plus values of the generated boundary layer mesh are all smaller than 4, which is most desirable for simulation of buoyancy flow. On the bottom right is the resulting flow fields of the buoyancy flow. Each arrow is pointing to the direction of the flow at each element, and the color of the arrow represents the magnitude of the velocity at each location. The maximum velocity of the buoyancy flow is about 0.7 meter per second above the human height. Analytical solution of buoyancy flow near a flat plate was also developed to validate the CFD simulation. The analytical model shows that the, ma the maximum velocity would be 0.8 meter per second, which is very close to the CFD simulation result of 0.7 meter per second and which helps to validate the CFD simulation. The mesh also shows good quality in terms of aspect ratio, schoolness angle, scaled Jacobian, and condition numbers. The meshing algorithm was also used to study the heat island effects under different landscape designs. The mesh was generated to preserve all the curves of the landscape design correctly, and then simulation was carried out, assuming the curved surfaces are covered with either trees, grass, or concrete. And the results show the heat island effect under concrete coverage is larger than 2.5, while the heat island effect under tree coverage is less than 1. Based on the previous meshing algorithm, a three-dimensional adaptive high hydrodominant meshing algorithm was developed and implemented. First, a background arc tree is generated adaptively with smaller cells near the geometry and bigger cells at far field. Secondly, a vortex is formed for each shell, and then high hydro pyramids, wedges, and Polyhedras are generated to form the 3D meshes for the simulation domain. These figures further illustrate the element types generated by this algorithm. For non-conformal geometry, sometimes unnecessary dense meshes are generated. A special algorithm was applied for such cases which can control the resolution of generated mesh. The figures show meshes with different resolutions for a model with a sphere in the cube. The dimension of the cube is 10 by 10 by 10, and the radius of the sphere is 2, when the mesh resolution on the sphere surface is at 0 0.05. The total number of elements in the adaptive mesh is around is around 533,000, yet the total number of elements in a uniform tetrahedral mesh with the same resolution will be around 47 million. The adaptive mesh reduces the number of elements significantly. The adaptive mesh generation algorithm takes Google SketchUp model as input. The Google SketchUp model of building CSS1 and its neighboring buildings was used to generate mesh for the study of natural ventilation conditions as shown in the figure. The weather condition of Philadelphia is first studied. It is found that at least 17% of the time, the weather condition is appropriate for natural ventilation. Those weather conditions are set as boundary conditions for the CFD simulations. The figures show the generated adaptive mesh and the uniform mesh. CFD simulations were conducted using both the uniform and the adaptive meshes. The air change rates of building CCS1 are summarized as soon. There are no observable changes of air change rates between the results from uniform mesh and the results from the adaptive mesh. 
while the number of elements is significantly reduced from the uniform mesh to the adaptive mesh. Therefore, the computation time of CFD simulation is also significantly reduced since the computation time is proportional to the number of elements in the domain. What is being shown here is the three-dimensional animation of the generated mesh. The dimensions of the simulation domain are 1,364, 1,691 by 185 meters. And the mesh resolution on the surface of the building is at 1 meter. The total number of elements in this set of mesh is about 1 million. The mesh generation is very challenging for such big domain and such detail at building level. In order to perform the simulation on a personal computer and with acceptable computation time, such as within half an hour, the total number of elements should be limited. The CFD computation time is proportional to the number of elements in the mesh. The computation time for the current study is about 26 minutes on a personal computer. This is the 3D animation of the CFD simulation results on the flow field around building 661 with three adjacent buildings and the flow inside building 661. Again, the vectors represent the flow directions at each element, and the color represents the velocity magnitude. The particle path visualization is showing how the air flows through inside the building 661 and exit to the outdoor environment. The particle path visualization is more intuitive and it helps architects to examine the flow pattern more effectively and helps with the design of better ventilated buildings.